The gorgeous young lady you see before you is Sade Robinson. She was 19 years old. At the time, she was attending a technical school college in Milwaukee, and she had interest in pursuing a degree in criminal justice. On April the 2nd, 2024, she did not show up for her job at a pizza restaurant. And her coworkers, they immediately became concerned because that was not like her and they knew something was wrong. The night before, on the 1st of April, she had planned an evening for a first date with a man by the name of Maxwell Anderson, and he was 33 years old. They were going to meet up at a local seafood restaurant. On April the 2nd, after police received a report um, that she hadn't shown up for work, they went by her home to do a welfare check, and they didn't find her. Now, the morning after her date, her car was found. It was a 2020 Civic, and it had extreme fire damage. And the authorities were able to identify the outfit that she had been wearing the night that she went out on the date. Now, this was the outfit in the car, not Sade. They also found her her car, her, I'm sorry, her iPhone in that car. Now, later on that day, the police kind of made a little bit of a discovery. They found a human leg on the beach in Warnemont Park in the Milwaukee suburbs. Now, this severed leg appeared to have been sawn off from the hip down. And an examination determined the leg belonged to a black woman approximately five feet tall. It was later identified as Robinson's uh, leg after the DNA test came back. Now, on April 6th, the police went and canvassed the area where her car was found, and they found more body parts uh, I'm not understanding how you go back. You found her car. I mean, did you not canvas then? That's what I'm not clear on. How it is that they go back like days later and they're seeing body parts unless they were dropped off later after the car was discovered. And then again, what would make you go back to search? I, to canvas that area, I don't know. I just have questions. Now, one of the body parts that they found on this canvas was a foot. And the, it, it appeared to be human flesh with this foot. Now, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the flesh was a part of the foot. The way that it's being mentioned, it almost seems like they found a foot and then, in addition to the foot, they found some flesh that had been left as well. They began to ping her cell phone. I guess you can do that even if it's destroyed. And they started April 1st from when she went on her date on her date. And it all, you know, led back to Maxwell and his house, his all the places where it pinged were places that he seemed to have gone. On Friday, April 12th, 2024, Maxwell Anderson was officially charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson of property other than a building. If convicted of the charges, especially the homicide, he could face life in prison. Now, he had been in jail a couple of days before he was officially charged. And at the bond hearing that he had, his attorney argued that there were no, there was no evidence tying her to his home. 
Well, after he was charged, the uh, evidence shows that he's been tied to the crimes with things such as Uh, video surveillance, witness accounts, and phone records. They also found blood in his house in several gasoline containers. So, you know, after they did another thorough go-round of his house, they did find blood. Now, among additional things found in Maxwell Anderson's home was in the basement, there was a sex dungeon. And, you know, people can have sex dungeons in their home and people can come over to enjoy them if that's how they get down. But the problem is if you have somebody in that dungeon who is not a willing participant, that's when it becomes a big problem. So having that dungeon, though technically there's nothing wrong with that, but Looking at what happened, you know, you have to kind of side eye. I know after I found out, I was kind of wondering, you know, are there any other victims that we don't know about? This young lady, this was a first date. I mean, is this his first victim? Are there more? I mean, I'm curious about that. Connection to those human remains that have been found across the area over the last 10 days. Since Sade went missing, her family has been asking for donations for search efforts. Today, the GoFundMe says the money will be used for memorial expenses. So far, law enforcement has not confirmed Sade's death or connected her to the body parts that have been found or the person of custody. In custody in all this, Maxwell Anderson. Our Jenna Ray walks us through a timeline since Sade went missing. The story begins on Monday, April 1st. That's when 19-year-old Sade Robinson was first reported missing. On Tuesday, April 2nd, family says Sade's car was found torched here near 30th and Lisbon on Milwaukee's north side that same day. Just really brings into question what is wrong with people. It's... It's heinous. A severed leg was found here at Warnemont Park in Cudahy, 11 miles from Sade's burned car. On Thursday, April 4th, our crews found Milwaukee County Sheriff's deputies searching a home on Oklahoma and 39th Street. That same day, Maxwell Anderson was taken into custody and identified as a person of interest in relation to the severed leg found in Cudahy. Now this is where things take another disturbing turn. Friday, April 5th, sheriff's deputies found more body parts near where I'm standing at 30th and Lisbon, the same location where Sade's car was found set on fire. On Saturday, April 6th, Sade's family searched that same area and found her blanket. It's devastating because um, when we came to look for her, we weren't coming looking for body parts. We were just coming to look for her. Milwaukee police came out to search again and found even more human remains. Now it's Sunday, April 7th. Sade's family comes back to search and finds human remains yet again. I want answers because I I need to know why somebody would want to do this to her. Let's go back to Maxwell Anderson for a second. While he has not been charged with a crime, we're naming him because of the nature of the allegations. On Tuesday, April 9th, Anderson went before a Milwaukee County judge where prosecutors asked for an extension to keep him behind bars. That extension was granted. The same night, family and friends of Sade's went back to Warnemont Park in Cudahy to search the area. She looked out for my baby. The least I could do was look out for her, her mama's baby. They say they found what they believe to be body parts, but that the sheriff's office needed to investigate further. It's now Thursday, April 11th, 11 days since Sade went missing. The sheriff's office is leading the investigation, but our phone calls and emails have gone unanswered. The DA's office confirmed charges are likely not coming today. Sade's mom tells me that once charges are filed, she plans to sit down and talk with us. I'm Jenna Ray for TMJ4 News. Anderson is formally charged with first degree intentional homicide, mutilation and arson. A criminal complaint shows on April 1st, Shawnee Robinson and Anderson went on a date at Twisted Fisherman just west of downtown. Court documents show that Shawnee's phone was tracked and it shows her location at Twisted Fisherman and then at Dukes on Water. Court documents also detail her phone was tracked to the area of Anderson's home. After being at Anderson's home for approximately three hours, 
hours and 19 minutes. Her phone was then traced to a park in River West for about a half hour. Then court documents show her phone was pinged near Warnemont Park where the severed leg was found early last week. Within the criminal complaint, authorities say the severed leg did belong to Sade Robinson. In addition to finding the severed leg, authorities say they also found a foot in human flesh, along with Shadi's clothes she was wearing, which were inside her burned car. Inside the courtroom this morning, Anderson's attorney tried to get the intentional homicide charge thrown out. He stated that he didn't believe there was enough probable cause for the intentional homicide charge. The judge denied that motion and says there is enough probable cause for the intentional homicide charge. Defense also asked for Anderson's bail to be taken down to $500,000. Shade Robinson's family spoke with us briefly after the court appearance. Say son of a is gonna pay. This is justice for Shade. What a would do something like this to my beautiful baby. She hurt nobody. Shade. Robinson was a beautiful girl with a bright future ahead. By all accounts, it's said that she was a lovely young lady and had a, a wonderful personality. So it's unfortunate that this has happened to her. It has been declared that she is deceased, though they don't have her whole body. They have enough evidence to say she is no longer with us. I wish peace and blessings for the family. I am Legacy Moon. I thank you for watching this video. If you are not subscribed to me, you might want to reach up there and hit that subscribe button and then that notification bell so that you know when I post my next video. And even if you don't subscribe, you're still welcome to come back and visit me. Now, the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is please, please, please hit that thumbs up and keep me high, high, high in the rhythm of ALG.